the last lesson helped us trace how various events were unfurling very fast following the socialist insurgents in Russia that began on October 24, 1917. We learned that under the leadership of Vladimir Lenin, the socialists, the Bolsheviks together wanted to end the rule of the provisional government so as to institute a new socialist government in Russia. When the Bolsheviks took over power throughout Russia by November 1917, they were wanting to institute new changes. In this lesson, we will be tracing the various changes that were happening in Russia post the revolution of October 1917. Abolition of private property was among the first few concerns of the Bolsheviks when they came to power in post-revolution Russia. We learned that the Bolsheviks were communists and they were against the private ownership of property or the modes of production. Instead, they wanted common ownership of property. And so, abolition of private property now became a very important thing that the Bolsheviks did after coming to power. Then they also took care of nationalization of banks and industries. So if the banks and industries were nationalized, those would now be controlled by the state. So individual owners or a group of owners will not be able to exercise their control on banks, industries, factories. And if these banks and industries were nationalized, then the state would be able to take care of the interests of the workers. And so banks and industries were nationalized. At the same time, lands were declared as social property. So from this, what we can infer is that everything was directed at the same thing. That is to say, everything was directed at this abolition of private property. So lands also ceased to be possessed or owned by individual owners. Instead, those now became social property. In fact, lands were also taken from the owners so that those could be given to the peasants. So these were among the first few things that the Bolsheviks did post-revolution. So from this, we can understand how much the Russian society had progressed and changed and transitioned to a new social order. During Imperial Russia, it were the Tsars who held absolute monarchical and dictatorial powers over the people of the lands. No other political parties were allowed to function. And no one could also contest the rule of the Tsar. Then the fall of the Russian Empire paved the way for the provisional government to come to power. But this provisional government was also dominated by the wealthy propertied men. And these men were in favor of private property. And following this, when the October Revolution of 1917 happened in Russia, the Bolsheviks now came to power and they completely sought to abolish private property. So the Russian society as well as the lives of the Russian masses were undergoing many drastic and rapid changes through the first few decades of the 20th century. Now abolition of private property and nationalization of banks and industry weren't the only things that the Bolsheviks did. The great Bolshevik leader Lenin now came up with a new idea of forming communal houses. Now what were these communal houses? In cities, large houses were partitioned into communal houses where many people could stay together. Firstly, this was a step taken towards the abolition of private property by breaking up large houses in the city. And when this idea of communal house now came to the fore, many architects were devoting their time to design new communal houses and apartments. Now, this 
establishment of communal houses was also about bringing to the fore a revolutionary topography revolutionary in the sense that in these communal houses people from different social classes lived together earlier on in imperial russia hierarchy among the various social classes was prevalent in fact even during the rule of the provisional government the wealthy propertied men the bourgeoisie the intellectuals got to be placed at the highest rung in the social order but now lenin was trying to achieve a classless communist society as he was a believer of marxian ideas and so these communal houses were also places where people from different social classes be that the rich and the poor started staying together likewise a new soviet hat was also introduced to the uniform of the military and this soviet hat was called the budyonovka this was meant to highlight changes in the military uniform as well so russia was now undergoing changes in every possible way be that in the sphere of society politics governance as well as the military's uniform before proceeding with this lesson let me ask you a question what was the soviet hat called that became a part of the military uniform in post revolution russia was it called the biretta the busby the budyonovka or the baikon well the correct answer is the budyonovka this now became the new soviet hat and this was meant to emphasize the changes in the military uniform now during this time communism became the most important and the most dominant political philosophy in russia earlier on we learned that lenin had renamed the bolshevik party as the communist party and now the bolshevik party was further renamed as the russian communist party bolshevik and this was meant to bring wider recognition to the party because this was now a national communist party this was now the russian communist party here what you see is the flag of the russian communist party bolshevik and on this flag what you see is lenin's face so this emphasizes the same point that lenin was everything for this bolshevik party for this russian communist party bolshevik as it now came to be called now during this time while the communists while this russian communist party bolshevik were gaining importance throughout the society they were still going through a process of gaining wider recognition and so the russian communist party bolshevik lost the november 1917 elections to the russian constituent assembly so the russian communist party bolshevik now failed to emerge as the largest party to enter the russian constituent assembly but over the years this russian communist party bolshevik became the most important party and let us learn how now when in this election of november 1917 the russian communist party bolshevik failed to emerge as the most important party in the elections to the russian constituent assembly the assembly now rejected the bolshevik measures in january 1918 we learned that this constituent assembly worked hands in hands with the provisional government and the provisional government was dominated by the bourgeoisie by those men who had access to wealth and who wanted to dominate the modes of production and so this constituent assembly was against the bolshevik measures 
And so they rejected the Bolshevik measures in January 1918. But Lenin was not a leader to retreat. He was there to establish Bolshevik rule in Russia. And so Lenin rejected the assembly outright. So Lenin also rejected the constituent assembly when the constituent assembly rejected the Bolshevik measures. From this we can understand that tension was rife between the constituent assembly on the one hand and the Russian Communist Party Bolshevik on the other hand. Now we know that since the beginning of the First World War, Lenin was against Russia's involvement in World War I because he knew that this war would take a severe toll on Russian economy, on Russian politics, on the Russian society as a whole. And it did. The Russian army suffered very crushing and humiliating defeats at the hands of the central powers on the Eastern Front. And Lenin now outrightly rejected this idea of prolonging Russia's involvement in World War I. And so, given Lenin's disapproval of Russia's involvement in World War I, the new Bolshevik government now signed the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk with the Central Powers on March 3, 1918. And with the signing of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk with the Central Powers, it now ended Russian participation in World War I. So, with this, the Bolshevik government now managed to pull Russia out of the devastating First World War. And when the Bolsheviks came to power, Russia now became a one-party state. And the Bolsheviks were all in all in Russia. The All-Russian Congress of Soviets became the parliament of the state. Because the Bolsheviks were of the opinion that this All-Russian Congress of Soviets was more democratic than the Constituent Assembly. And so this now became the parliament of the state. And there was just one party to rule Russia and that was the Russian Communist Party Bolshevik. But do you think that only one party can rule any state, any nation, any country? There weren't any opposing ideas. Is it ever possible to have such a homogeneous response from the population? That is never possible. Because many people will have their own responses to the governmental systems, their own opinions on the political affairs of the state. And likewise also happened in Russia post-revolution. But we just learnt that Russia now became a one-party state under the Bolsheviks. And the Bolsheviks, in order to be in power and maintain their authority, now imposed censorship. So censorship in post-revolution Russia was very strict and rigid. The masses were not able to speak anything against the Bolshevik party. At the same time, the Bolsheviks also sought to suppress any dissenting opinions. And so, there was their secret police organization called the Cheka initially, which later on came to be known as OGPU as well as NKVD. Now, these secret police organizations like the Cheka, OGPU, NKVD punished anyone who criticized the Bolshevik government. So, censorship was very strict in post-revolution Russia under the Bolsheviks. And at the same time, if any person held any dissenting opinion, any contrasting opinion or contested the rule of the Bolshevik government, then that person was severely punished for saying so. And at the same time, trade unions were also regulated by the Bolshevik party. So nothing in post-revolution Russia was really independent, so to speak.
Now here lies the irony of the situation. The masses thought that the Bolsheviks would institute a new communist state and there they would be given freedom. Because the masses lived in Imperial Russia under a state of oppression. Because in Imperial Russia, no one could contest the rule of the Tsar. But it was very similar under the Bolsheviks as well. The masses did not really have any opinion in the political affairs. The masses did not really have the freedom to speak against the Bolshevik government. So in this lesson, we have looked at the changes that happened in the society after the revolution in Russia. We learned that the Russian Communist Party Bolshevik came to be the only party to rule Russia. And it was ruling Russia by imposing very many restrictions and censorship. The masses did not really get proper freedom under the Bolsheviks. Having talked about this in our subsequent lesson, we will be focusing on the Russian civil war that broke out as a repercussion of the Bolshevik rule in Russia. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon. You can also register for free at deltastep.com or download the Delta Step app to learn one to one with our amazing teachers or to get access to all our 5000 plus amazing videos as per your school syllabus. Master each topic with our adaptive practice technology. Get million plus questions with step by step solutions and unlimited mock tests. Get all your doubts resolved instantly. Learn via games and win amazing prizes like PlayStations and iPads. So at Delta Step, learning is not just fun and easy, it's rewarding too. So register for free now.